before anything else, let let me hear your story, please. Yeah, sure. So um, for those who don't know who I am, I'm Maria Concha. I'm a mindset and manifestation coach. I work with women to reprogram limiting beliefs, empowering them to manifest what they desire in their lives, whether that's personal or business. So before I became Manifesting Ninja and this brand, I really, my story is I'm from New York, grew up in Queens. I grew up with a single mom. And um, I had brother and a sister who has now passed away. Uh, but uh, it was really just the three of us growing up. My mom, she, my dad and my mom, they had broken up uh, or he left her when I was very young. And uh, my dad was in and out of jail, just uh, just kind of that's how I knew him to be um, until I just didn't see him again. And so it really was just my mom and my siblings and we ended up just kind of doing the best we could she did the best that you know she could with us and i just remember growing up in in you know in a way where it felt like we were you know we were lacking stuff we you know my mom always worried and was very stressed and she had to she dealt with depression and at the at the time i didn't know what depression was it was only when i got older that i realized my mom was struggling with depression so we were given the basics right some food and shelter but we were neglected um, and then I, we were exposed to a lot of different things, right? When you're younger, you just kind of are exposed to different things. And my mom constantly leaned on other people for help and support. So she, she invited, you know, different, um, people to our homes. Um, and then she ended up, uh, meeting someone and I was abused growing up, you know, by that person. So was my sister. So there was just like a lot of difficulty, a lot of challenges and trauma that happened at an early age. And it really wasn't until I was in high school that I, I started to kind of maybe realize a couple of things. And it was because of the, at the time I had a boyfriend and my boyfriend's mom, she was asking me a lot of questions about myself and things that were triggering me. And so when I was about 15, I spoke up about what happened to me and yeah, and I wasn't, no one believed me. And so I ended up having to leave my home at 16 and just kind of being on my own at 16. I was with my sister for a bit, but then from there, that moment on, I realized like really only have me and, and, and that's going to have to just be okay. We're going to, we're just gonna have to figure it out. So I put myself in therapy at a young age because it was either that or what, a, you know, destructive path. And therapy was actually the thing that got me on this path, realizing that I can change uh, my future. I can change who I am. I could change my thoughts. I also just being able to be heard by someone else and validated and be seen and empowered. Uh, and she was incredible. My therapist, when I was 17, is when I found her. And from that moment on, there was like a light bulb, something really lit up in inside of me. And I, I just, I went on the journey of self-discovery and like just reading a ton of different books. And, um, and then I went on to college and I actually didn't go to college for, to become, you know, a, a speaker or a coach or, or any kind of, a any kind of self-development work. It was really for theater and acting. And so I acted at a whole other life before this one. But what it taught me was the self-belief that you need to have to make anything happen. So that career really showed me, you know, how resilient I am on top of just everything that I went through, right? Because if, uh, if you're in acting in that world, you are going to get rejected many times by many a lot of variables. So I went on to produce, to write, to be in commercials and movies and plays and all that. And that just strengthened my character more. And it really taught me about mindset, which is where we are today. And that opened up the doors for the law of attraction and really wanting a better life for myself, better than I had known growing up and better than probably I could imagine. At the time, all I wanted was stability. I wanted um, to, you know, to have enough money to survive. I wanted a loving home. So these are certain things that I wanted to manifest for myself. And then it led into me 
uh, just starting my business, which led to more businesses. And it allowed me to pursue a career, a, really a, a dream, a purpose of mine that I had no idea was fully inside of me. But here we are today. Okay, first of all, I'm sorry that you had to go through everything that you went through, but you, you're doing so well now. Your your story is beautiful. Obviously, I had read some parts of it, and it uh, it made me so happy to read that, especially where you know manifestation is concerned and actually having the confidence to talk about it. But before we get into that, I have one question to ask you. There are people who believe that everything happens for a reason, that all the challenges that are placed in your path are there for a reason, and they're leading to something bigger. You have been through so much. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So I think that every, I, I believe that um, everything happened uh, for me, not to me. Have you heard of that? It's yeah. happening for yeah. me. Yeah. The truth is, I'll be honest, I wouldn't be who I am today if it weren't for those experiences. And I don't think that hardships happen to everyone so that, and, and it's everyone's job to make it this like empowered story. I don't think everyone has it in them. But for me, I was born this way. And all I knew to do was to transmute and transform those painful experiences into really purpose-driven opportunities for me. And it fueled me. So I believe that, does everything happen for a reason? I'm not sure, but I know that whatever happens for me, I turn it into so much fuel for what I'm meant to do in this world. Wow, that's amazing. That is so powerful. Tell me this, uh, as you were, you know, going through this journey, you were doing acting and then you said you did uh, uh, other stuff as well. So as during this journey, at what point did you think that, hey, I am manifesting a better life for myself. I'm manifesting all of these things that I wanted for myself. Did you call it manifestation? And at what point did you think, not only am I going to do this for myself, I'm also going to teach other people? Yeah. So it was basically... I was, I remember very clearly I was working. I had a, I was a receptionist at a doctor's office and I was sitting there every single day in the mornings. Right. And I just would meet women that were doing really cool things in the world. And the thing that caught my eye was that they were independent, like uh, financially independent and they were uh, impacting the world in a positive way. So that was the, the like that second light bulb. Like I want to do that as well. Um, and so basically what happened was I, when it came to acting, I mentioned it's not stable. It's not, it's just not stable work. You don't know when you're going to act, when you're going to get a job and all of that, and when you're going to get paid. And so I realized quickly that there's a lot of variables in acting and I want to have a family one day and I want to have a sort of future where I have stability. So I always knew that I would have a, my own business. I just didn't know what it would be. So I thought I'm going to manifest a business here of mine. And I was always a very positive person. So I just picked the lowest hanging fruit, which was, um, you know, uh, showing people just the things that have worked for me and how positivity can really shift so much inside of you. And so I think that I just decided I am going to start this business because I have implemented so much of what I've worked so much of, of what's helped me and what I've worked on. And it's, it's started to change. Little things started to change in my life. It didn't start, it wasn't big, but little things started to change. Like I started to feel different. I started to feel more confident. I started to be more clear on the things I wanted. And I wasn't apologizing for these things. And I wasn't like, I can't get them. No, I, I started to really have this belief behind every idea that came to me. And the belief was like, you can make it happen. You'll figure it out. Just like take that first step. And that was a game changer for me. This idea that I, whatever I set my mind to and I align my thoughts and my beliefs and my whole being with it, I can create and I can manifest. And so little things started to happen like that. And then I started to manifest different opportunities. Like within my, my job, I wanted to work just a certain amount of days and that was unheard of. Right? <clears throat> and I got it. the things I was asking for. I got it. The things I was writing down that I wanted, I was getting more money started coming in more different opportunities. And so I, I was on to something. And then I met, I met my now um, partner and we've been together now for 13 years, but wow. I wanted a man of really great love. So 
this is how it started. I started to feel better in, in, in mentally and emotionally. I started to manifest better mental health and, and all of these different things. And then that help shape my bigger dream. I love this. Okay. <laughs> we just shared with our listeners this incredible struggle that you went through growing up. And you know, there's so much literature around this now that your childhood years really contribute massively to who you become as an adult. So where did all of this belief and this alignment that people struggle so much with, where did it come from? What do you think contributed to it? So the belief came with the understanding of how it my mind works and the simple knowing that the thoughts that i'm thinking are creating my reality because it's it's impacting how i show up that alone made me rethink my thoughts it brought an awareness a massive awareness to my life and the realities that i had and so i thought like okay if i think something that's not in alignment with what I want, then I'm not going to get what I want. And it's not like think it and poof, it will just show up in your life. No, it's think it, right? Your thoughts are going to impact the actions that you take or don't take. Therefore, getting the results in your life. So I thought, well, if I think a negative thought, something that's not in alignment with the life that I want, then I'm, I'm going to not, I'm going to be so far away from what I want. So let me just switch that perspective and let me just see how this, how this, um, I wouldn't just say it's positive thinking. It's not just positive thinking. It's just thinking thoughts and believing in things that will move me closer to my goals. It's as simple as this. When I started my business, I said yes to everything, mostly everything that aligned with my goal of having a successful business and no to the things that didn't. So the thoughts that I had were, okay, if I, if the thought was, you can't make this, you can't launch a successful business. You don't know anything about business. That doesn't align with my goal. So I'm not going to think that goodbye. That's not serving me in any way. And if it didn't serve me and the end goal or whatever it is, there isn't really an end goal, but if it didn't serve the goal that I wanted, then the answer was, I'm not going to think that I'm going to reshift. And, and, and really reroute to a different thought. And it's, that's where it started. And it started as it's proof. You just try it for one day. Try to really think thoughts that are in alignment with the life that you want. If you want to feel different, if you want to feel more empowered, then think thoughts that align with that. Try it. It's very, it's very, it's quick to give you results. What's not quick is for people to stay consistent with thinking these things. That's what's not quick. As you started working with other people, and by by now you've worked with a lot of people and, and your clients have seen a lot of success, have there been any common elements, any commonality to all of their stories that have told you that, okay, if you do this, this really works? Well, so I, I would just say that when people come to me, they're at a point when they are feeling very stuck, stuck in their minds, in this, in the, in the thoughts that just kind of keep ruminating, right? And anxious, overwhelmed, feeling a lack of clarity, feeling a lack of confidence. So they come to me when they're at that place, but they know they were meant for more. And so we start, we will always start with awareness, a deep dive on awareness, on what are their predominant thoughts. But also, I think a lot of the times people lack awareness because you're not your own coach, right? This is why you work with people so that they can shed light to those the kind of the blind spots, right? So we start with awareness and we start with bringing awareness to what it is that you desire, truly want. So why do I say that? Why do I say what is it truly want? Because in order for you to go where you actually want to be, you need to know what that looks like right? Like I'll give you a perfect example. A client of mine came to me. She said, Maria, I want to manifest a beautiful big apartment in Manhattan. She had an apartment already in the city, Manhattan. I'm from New York. She's from New York and she wanted to manifest a bigger apartment. Okay. So this is what she thought she came to me for. By the second month of working with me, she said, I realized I actually didn't come to you for that. I realized why I came to you. 
And I said, why? She said, I was feeling depressed. I was feeling anxious. I was not in a good mental state. And I feel so much better now. And I said, okay, this is great. Ding, ding, ding. This is our hitter. Not only did she manifest her incredible big apartment that she wanted, but she said, I don't even care about that apartment anymore. I got it. Great. Amazing. She said, I'm healthy. I'm happier. I'm a better mom. I show up. I'm more present. Right. So I think that, and, and the only reason she was able to even recognize that is because we were bringing awareness to what really mattered to her. Right. Right. I think society or culture, this world we live in is like showing you these very shiny objects, right? Get the house, get the car, get the, you know, the, the shiny name brand stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, that what is the house if you are not mentally well? What is the house if you are not at peace with yourself? Right. We're not going to always be happy. It's okay. It's, you, you, if, shitty things happen that you can't always be happy and that's okay. However, being at peace and finding peace with yourself, that, that is what, you know, we, we, we all could, could say, you know, we would, would want. So I think that the biggest thing is bringing awareness to what it is that people truly want, not based off of, or influenced by society, by parents, by friends, by the culture just truly from what you desire. And I think people have lost the ability to discern what do they want based off of who they actually are because they don't even know who they are. Yeah, so true, so true. Okay, now I would like to know a little bit about the process that goes into something like this because, you know, a lot of people who are trying to manifest or trying to, you know, call out to the universe, a lot of the times it's being driven by desperation. There are a lot of people who are in really, really bad situations. They just want it to stop like the pain to stop the the helplessness all of that how do they then shift this sort of this state of mind to something more optimistic more conducive to you planning a life to you even trying to think about what do i really want as you said because when you don't even have necessities when you are so helpless then that's that that can be very difficult so if we were speaking to someone like that someone who feels like nothing is going in their favor can they make this work for themselves? What do they do? Yeah, so I think that for those that are feeling helpless, like nothing is working for them, I think that the goal is not to try to manifest these big, grand, you know, I don't know, things, right? It's really just starting with asking themselves, how do I want to feel every day? How do I want to feel? I say like, how do I, okay, I want to feel supported. I want to feel safe. I want to feel inspired. I want to feel energized. I want to feel hopeful. Okay, so you you bring that first and foremost. Claim how you want to feel. Put that at the forefront of your day. Okay, so you're good. So this is how I would, start. I would start with, okay, how do I want to feel? Okay, then I would start with the next question would be, who do I want to be? So you connect, right? So if you want to feel these things, who do you want to be? And who do you need to be in order to feel these things? Right, if you want to feel safe, some form of safety, right? Who do you need to be? Okay, well, I need to be the kind of person I want to be the kind of person who doesn't keep thinking these negative thoughts, these fear-driven thoughts that, truth be told, are not true. They're only true if I believe them to be true, right? So even if you are in a situation that's, that's unfortunate, that's of need, that's lacking, like I was when I was younger, it wasn't helpful for me at that time to say, to like just repeat how bad things were going. That wasn't going to do anything. So who I needed to be, I needed to be the person that was going to tell myself a different story in order to change my narrative. So who do you need to be? I need to be, you know, more positive. I need to have a different perspective. I need to show up differently, right? So show up differently, meaning I'm going to not entertain the news. There's no point of watching the news. It's only going to add to your stress, really, unless you're 
freaking reporter or that's your job, then you don't really need to know what's going on in the news. There's nothing you can do about most of what's happening. Like directly I'm talking about the best you can do is take care of yourself. So you don't add to the collective of stress, right? So the question, the first one is how do I want to feel? So I want to feel this, you putting out how you want to feel, then who do I need to be? Right? So I would ask those questions. And the third question I would ask myself is what do I want to receive? So let's dream a little bit here. Let's add some hope. I want to receive um, opportunities. I want to receive laughter, right? Let's start with like these, these simple things that we take for granted that when they do come into our lives, make us feel so good. So like I would start with what do I want to receive? Put it out there. I want to receive maybe it's more money, right? Maybe it's support. What do you want to receive? So I would tell them to center their days, starting with being intentional about how they want their days to go. Little by little, they will start to see the shifts because it's addicting. What's addicting? Feeling good, feeling safe. That's addicting, right? So you want to keep doing it. So if you if you if this process works for you and you feel even just a little bit, an ounce. Of, of a healthier up here, of, of happiness, of joy, of peace, why not do it? So this is where I would start. I would start with the basics. That makes so much sense. Yeah. When I was in depression, my I used to get so, I, I used to be in so much pain that I would often pray and I would say, give me one good day. Just give me one good day with no anxiety, no voices in my head. Just give me one good day. And my mentors would tell me, that's not going to happen right now. Ask for one good hour. Just that's it. Have power over your thoughts for one hour. Shape that hour however you want to. Just that one hour. And then we'll get to one day and then a week and so on and so forth. And you're so right. That That's, I think, and tell me if you disagree with me, but I believe that is one of the reasons why affirmations don't work. Very often people who are broke are trying to affirm this idea that I am a millionaire. I am people who look in the mirror and hate what they see are trying to affirm I'm I'm sexy and everybody's attracted to me. And would you agree with that? Because I think that where you are and what you're trying to affirm is so in so poles apart that you simply cannot bring the belief to that affirmation. Yeah, I think that affirmations won't work if you don't do them in a way that works for you. I'll give you an example. If you are living paycheck to paycheck, barely making any money, and you're affirming, I am a billionaire, the likelihood of you buying into that and believing it is is small. Listen, are there people that can buy into it? Yes, but I don't, more often than not, I've come across people that can't buy into that, right? So, I think it's important to choose things like I'm in the process of healing my relationship with money. I'm in the process of learning how to expand my money mindset or if it's like uh, how they look, right? I'm working towards loving my body every day. I'm working on feeling good about who I am just as I am. Yeah. I am worthy and I am worthy of love just like anyone else, regardless of how I look. Right. So saying affirmations that you can buy into and saying them in a way that you, how you speak, don't say it the way Oprah says certain things. I love Oprah, but if you don't speak like her and you don't use those words, it's hard to buy into something when that's not even like how you speak. So I think affirmations work if you say them in a way that works for you. And that's, that's technique. You just got to, I just gave a little technique there. So it gets a it could get a little technical, but, um, affirmations work if you say, and also what I want to say too, is anyone that's listening, the most important thing to know is that the only thing that is true is what you believe to be true. That's the only thing that's true. So regardless of what I'm saying, what Karate is saying, what anyone says, unless you buy into the belief, then it's not true. Even if technically, factually, it's true. It doesn't matter what technically, factually, what whoever says. It's what you subscribe to. So I'm saying certain things. You either, it resonates and you want to believe in it or you don't. 
but really the only thing is true is what you believe to be true. Love that. That makes so much sense. I, I would like to share this one thing. I had a lot of cystic acne uh, from for like seven years of my life. So at and they were it was bad. It was like from the top of my forehead to like the bottom of my chin. It was so bad. I it was all over my face. I got kicked out of public places because people thought I had some kind of skin disease and it was bad. And how I looked and at some point, like I had been to so many doctors, I thought, okay, this is my face, maybe forever. I don't know. So at the time, I didn't try to affirm that, oh, I'm beautiful and everybody looks at me and is, is sees someone beautiful. I affirm that it doesn't matter how I look because I am br a brilliant communicator. I'm brilliant at debate. I'm going to shape my life, make it beautiful through those other things. And I, I'm telling you to this day, I don't feel very beautiful, but I don't let it stop me. I can flirt. I can go on dates. I can date people that I look at and think, oh, man, it's so out of my league. But I can still <laughs> move forward with that. It doesn't stop me. But to this day, when somebody, when there's too much focus on how I look, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't quite believe people when they tell me that, oh, you look so great. You're beautiful. I, I don't believe them. I still don't have the belief, but I do not let that interfere with w what I want out of my life. I go ahead and I do things and I do them with a lot of confidence and I do them with a lot of happiness and not like heavy energy, you know? So. I don't know if you want to say something about that because I I would like to I would like for people to know that that you can lack a certain belief and yet not let that interfere with your progress if your overall mental setup is in your favor like you know you've been talking about. Yeah, and I think that was beautifully said. You know, at the end of the day, it's all subjective, right? So if you look at it like that, like what you may think is beautiful or what I may think is beautiful could be different. So like if you look at it like way then you know um and i agree i think that look i do things all the time that i don't feel confident about and i do things all the times that make me feel that i'm like scared of but that's my mindset i've strengthened my mindset to the point where i'm like well regardless i'm just gonna do it anyway i think that that's helped me get to where i am today instead of just freezing and overthinking right i'm just gonna do it scared i'm gonna do it feeling um you know not great i'm not i don't always show up feeling like great i'm not always in you know makeup or this or that sometimes i've shown up to things because i just whatever and i didn't always feel really great looking right um i just don't and i also realized that there's a lot of uh, imposed, uh, like there's there's a lot of influence of with society of like how I should look, how we all should look. So I take it with a grain of salt, to be honest. Beauty is in the, the eye of the beholder, and my mindset around beauty has shifted, and I think that it's shifted to an empowering perspective, one that doesn't make me feel like I need to show up and look a certain way. No. I'm going to be me and I love me for who I am. Even if I have no freaking makeup, even if my hair is not done or whatever the case may be. Um, like when I show up, my perspective is I'm going to show up because a certain way, because it makes me feel good. But even if you don't, like you said, even if you don't feel like you're attractive or whatever, you have to just think of like, to whose standard is that? Like, is it even your standard? So right. True. Who are you? comparing it to. Yeah. And I do real, I'm not stupid about that at the end of the day, I, this is like a really, I think this is kind of a topic that I don't, I don't see a lot of people touching this topic because it could be controversial, but I'm not, I'm not naive to the fact that there is a standard of beauty and it's not just like the typical model looking. No, like I realize if you have, if your hair looks a certain kind of way, if your skin is a certain kind of color, if you have smooth skin, if you know how to do, I, we, I'm not naive to the, to this either, but I think that even if there are certain standards that our world has deemed beautiful, I think that at the end of the day, it's up to you to either buy into it or not. Yeah. So when I'm not feeling beautiful, cause I'm not looking all like done up, kind of like, you know what? It's fine. Like I feel good because I know who I am and I know what I have to bring to the table. And beauty is, that's just like one element of, of this world. And I don't think that there's like, it's not like the substance, right? So again, it's a mindset thing. 
And I also think for someone who's struggling and wants to feel more beautiful or feel more sexy or whatever, like define what that means for you and what that looks like for you based off of what like feels good to you. Because I think a lot of times people feel like, oh, I want to look like this. I want to look like Kim Kardashian. And then they start to do the makeup like her, but they don't feel comfortable. Right. So define what, what, maybe it's just, well, maybe it's not even makeup. Maybe it's just doing your hair a certain way, or maybe it's just, you know, doing certain things in your life that make you feel good. And that makes you feel more beautiful. Right. So define what beauty is for you, whether you're a woman or a man or whatever. I think it's important. I love everything that you said. And for what it's worth, like I had guys who were with me in high school tell me later that they had a huge crush on me when we were in high school. And that was with all the acne and shit. But at the time, I was so focused on what wasn't in my favor, what I didn't have, that I would never have imagined that oh, there are people who look at me and think, oh, that's hot or that's attractive or this person is awesome. I just, that didn't cross my mind. And I think that happens so very often in life, especially, you know, when you're doing something big, like you're starting a business, you're starting a new course, or you are, you know, stepping away from your family and not leaning on them anymore and venturing out in the world by yourself. You're so focused on everything you don't know, everything you don't have. You don't even see everything that's working in your favor. And how someone else is looking at you and thinking, oh, man, I wish I could be more like this person. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, that's amazing that it doesn't, it doesn't quite cross your mind. But yeah, that happens so often. Yeah, I, I love that we talked about this. Talk to me about positivity versus faith. And again, you know, tell me if you don't want to talk about this, but do you believe in a higher power? And does that contribute to manifestation? I do believe in a higher power, but like not because... It's like my, it's not because it's like, what's going to allow me to manifest stuff. I just like to see it. Like we have a team, a physical team of people here, whether it's your mom, whether it's your best friend, some, you know, people that are rooting for you on this earth. And that's amazing. Right. Because I feel like I'm a type of person that I love connection. I love when people are rooting for me. I really desire it, the support. Great. But then I also feel like I also have a team of spiritual guides that are also rooting for me. It's like just they're they just know they have a different vantage point than physical team in this world. So I like to recruit as much support as I can from I'll take it from anywhere. Bring it on. <laughs> so I think that I think that um on top of my therapist and my coach and and everybody I just like I'm like give me an abundance of support and guidance I welcome it all. I don't know everything and I don't think uh, I'm meant to know everything. I think connecting with people and being open to guidance has gotten me here. Um so I think that whether you believe in a higher power or not at the end of the day if if uh, you, whatever beliefs you have, have allowed you to move forward and in a fruitful way and see things manifest in your life, amazing. That's great. If you don't believe in a higher power, that's okay too. You don't have to. This isn't a, there's not like a blueprint mm -hmm. that says, here's how you manifest and the only way you will manifest. No, it's really what you believe in. So faith, is something that I have, but in a way that it's non-denominational. So it's not attached to any religion. Mm -hmm. I believe in humanity. I believe in the universe. I believe that we are all connected. This is interesting because I, I am religious. I have a lot of faith and it helps me massively. And in fact, my religious teachings, what I read in my scripture helps me. But at the same time, if I were to logically consider this <clears throat> not believing in a higher power, maybe make you feel more powerful because it's all in your hands then and you are really and truly shaping your destiny. So I find that very interesting. But how would you, what would you recommend that people do or scrutinize themselves in a way perhaps where they can spot when their positivity is venturing into the toxic territory like we often talk about toxic positivity versus when it's faith, when it's simply them working out their belief and trying to keep things in their favor. I think the moment you start to neglect how you feel because you keep trying to be positive, I think this is when it becomes toxic. I think when people try to suppress quote unquote negative feelings, this is when it becomes harmful because manifestation or conscious manifestation is not about 
hiding or neglecting or negating the hardships and the challenging emotions and the things that come up. This is life and we have to feel through it. The only way to get through it is to feel, feel, you know, feel through it. So I think that when you, when people start to kind of have this, um, this like, uh, I would say like almost like, um, being distracted from what's really happening because they think that positivity is going to make it go away. I think this can be harmful more than helpful, right? Because then you're just suppressing, you're just suppressing the pain and the, and, 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 and big things. Like I don't expect anyone who's gone through loss, right. To be like, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm great. That's, that's not okay. Right. Your nervous system, you're tricking your nervous system. Your nervous system is just like not, is, is trying to show you we're not okay. This is sad. We're angry where whatever the case may be, but you're trying to override your nervous system by trying to say, we're good. I'm fine. I'm happy. I believe that when you start to suppress things like that, this is where you dis-ease comes from and you can manifest different types of, you know, dis-ease in your body. And so I think that this is where positivity, like if it's not like you don't need to, you don't need to dodge the negative, challenging stuff. This is not what this is about. This is about equipping yourself with the tools to help you during those times because they will be there because it's life. You just never know what's going to come up and that's, that's okay. But when you feel equipped with the tools to go through it in a healthy way, it's not as scary. So you don't have to pretend like everything's fine because you're equipped. Yeah, I love this. Again, this is something that not very many people talk about. And it's so true. There's so much literature now around uh, trauma residing in your body and happening because of a lot of the repression that we practice. Because sometimes it's just life and it doesn't give you time to feel really much of anything, especially if you're a parent, especially if you're a boss. And sometimes it's just we don't want to feel it because we're so scared. And I don't know if you remember this, but in the movie, The Secret, this was like... I. I liked the movie overall, I guess, but this was the most toxic idea where they talked about how a thought is like a seed that you plant. And if you at any point stop watering that seed, it's gonna, the plant is going to die. So you have to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and negative thoughts should simply not be allowed. I watched it a long time ago, but I remember this thought sticking with me because I tried to do that. It was so toxic and so heavy because how can you possibly maintain positivity when your life is going in a direction that that feels so uncomfortable and so painful and scary. So thank you so much for saying what you just said. That is so massively important. So would it be okay to say that if we hit, like maybe we're working on a project and we think the result is going to be in our favor, it's not, is it okay to maybe like excuse yourself and just, you know, wallow in that feeling of helplessness, feeling of loss, feeling of grief, and then start over? You know, yes, it's more than okay because you're human and we have these emotions and we were giving these emotions not to suppress them, but to feel them in, in a healthy way. And I think that that's the key word in a healthy way. Um, people ask me all the time, Maria, are you just always happy? And I'm like, no, I'm human. I'm not always happy. A lot of things happen that I'm not happy about, but the difference is I don't stay in it long enough for more of that stuff to manifest. Meaning this, I honor what comes up in a healthy way. And then I will, okay, I've given it space. I don't need to stay in this longer than I need to, because I just don't. It's this, it gets to a point where it's just not healthy to stay in it. Right. And this is where you have to recognize, okay, wait, I've honored it, but why am I still here? And I think that what happens is that there's self-sabotage, you know, we get into victim mode and all the different insert, all the different ways of being that, that will impact us in, in not a positive way. So I think that, and this is where the work is very important. So acknowledging it, honoring it. Most people don't know how to honor and acknowledge in a healthy way, their emotions, which is why it's important to understand how to do that. Right. So that you give it its space and then you're good. And that not you're good, like, oh, it's over. But like for that moment, you've honored it. And now you can function in the world 
in a healthy way, like function at work, function, whatever we have, you know, business as a mother, right? A lot of moms suppress so much and then they freaking snap and then they're snapping at their kids and then they're, and then they feel bad and they feel guilty. But if you would have just taken just two minutes, three minutes, I don't care if it's on the toilet to ground yourself, to honor what is happening, give yourself a good cry, whatever that may be. Like things are, things that happen don't feel good. They horrible things happen. It's not going to feel good. Right. So I think that's what it is. I don't stay in it long enough for more of it to manifest. I know, give it its space. And I know how to like, all right, cool. Let's put you, let's keep, you're still here, but now I'm just with your permission body. I'm going to just go on and do this because it doesn't feel good to stay in my sadness right now. I'm going to just do something else, but I'll be back. Right. I'm not going to neglect it. Yeah. Love that. I love what you've said about this. But there is such a, like we, there's this whole thing going on about how life is going for us, how, you know, things are going as and when we are making effort, whether it's working out for us or not. But there's such a thing as what we believe about the world. Like we talked about beauty, you know, if I believe that, oh, men are only attracted to, I don't know, uh, blonde women who are super lean and uh, like 5'11", something like that. I am, I, that is not, that is not a criteria I fit. I will always struggle with dating, right? I would always struggle with putting myself out there, but I don't believe that. So it's easier for me. I believe I don't, I like at the time I believe when, as we talked about the, my experiences, I believe that men are not that shallow. Men don't just look at somebody's face or body. They care about personality, sense of humor, that sort of thing. And I've got it. So that's, let's get out there, right? That helped, massively helped. Now there is such a thing as what you believe about yourself, your self-image, and then what you believe about the world working with all of these clients and your own experience did you ever feel like that gets in the way of how people are showing up because if you believe that the forces are not quite in your favor or the world is rigged against you as so many people believe especially when they're constantly working hard that struggle can be really bad so does that get in the way and if so how do we get clarity around it because that's something that rarely gets discussed Yeah. So yes, it definitely gets in the way. It's one of the first things that we work on when I start working with a client, which is what do you believe about the world? What do you believe is possible? What do you believe is possible for you? Right. There's what you believe is possible. And then there's what do you believe is possible for you? Right. So uncovering how they view the world, the lens in which they see the world, because the lens in which you see the world is what's going to allow you to make certain decisions. It's what's going to have you react a certain way. It's going to, it's really how you move in this world. And so it's really, I think it's really important to uncover, like, how do you view the world and really dissect like all the things I do believe. So what I, one of the exercises I have them do is I have them create this web. So like I ha- so it's like a circle inside the circle it's their name and I have them and the tentacles on the web are all the identities that they have about themselves right all the different identities maybe like I'm not that smart um just different things of how they view themselves and the identities that the world has given them right maybe your parent is like you know deemed you as a crier or whatever the case may be. So I'm a crier. I'm a this, I'm a that. So I I bring awareness around the things, the identities that they carry about themselves. So they understand like, oh, I didn't even know I saw myself this way. So like, what are you operating with, right? Are you operating from possibility or are you operating from impossibility? And how do you know? Well, take a really good look on who, how you see yourself. Anything else you would recommend that people can do to get clarity? Because based on, you know, all of what you've suggested, it seems like clarity is something you would need, like start talking about what do you really want, then your identities, all of this, anything you would recommend that people do to have more clarity. And do you agree that that would be like the cornerstone of all of what will follow so far as manifestation is concerned? Yeah. So the, the clarity comes with, okay, so you obviously get clear and bring awareness to how you see yourself. But then from the most, most of the time, if someone's doing this exercise is because they're struggling with how they see themselves. So a lot of the identities and things that they write are not going to be ones that are in their favor. So 
But then you would ask yourself, okay, well then how do I want to see myself? And now you can create a list of all the ways and all the identities that you want to really take on for yourself, all the, all the ways you want to embody, like, you know, the identities you want to embody so that you can show up like this. Yeah. Here's what I love about this. Cause anytime I've ever had like conversations with manifestation coaches and really any of this content, I always feel like they're saying that get this right and then start with the process and things will happen for you. But with everything you've shared, it feels like live your life and do this as you go along and things will just simply keep getting better and better and better. So I, I really like that. Um, it's a, you are making manifestation sound safe. And I like it. I really, really think that that is what people need to hear. In case my listeners have not noticed that idea here, that is a very strong theme in everything you've shared up to this point. Like this is not uh, a hazardous object that you're handling with shaky hands. This is all for you. This is working in your favor. You just got to keep going and make sure that every element that you're adding to this particular recipe is something you love. Absolutely. Agree. Yeah. Any spiritual tools that you would recommend here? Because we've talked a lot about practical exercises and I love that. But any spiritual tools you would recommend that people can use? Well, I don't necessarily, uh, I guess, I, I, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't put it in like spiritual or practical or anything. But I guess if I'd have to go to the woo woo area, um, I would probably say us uh, outside from like affirmations, which is I think it's practical, but some people might think it's woo-woo. I would also say journaling is a really good one um, where you're kind of just um, really tuning into how you're feeling in yourself. And also vision board could be exciting as well. I don't know if anybody's into, I don't, by the way, I don't vision board for why people, most manifestation coaches vision board, like most manifestation coaches vision board, because they're like, put it on your vision board. Then you're going to see it manifest. I vision board because it feels good for me to see exciting images in my life. That's why I vision board because it feels good to use my hands to cut out possibility, creativity, inspiration. It's like a power. It's like, feels so good to take into my own hands. I don't, I'm not attaching an end result to any of it. It just feels good to me to see these colors, to see the, right. So, so that's a vision board. There's a different release ceremonies that I do. So like you can, if there are things that you want to really let go of. And the reason that I, I recommend release ceremonies and letting go ceremony is because in order to manifest what you want to see in your life, you have to have space for it. You got to make space for it. And so when you release these things, it just feels so good to like let go of stuff. But then also you, you have more bandwidth, right? To allow the things that you truly want to see in your life. So one of the things that I would say is the release ceremony and you just like take a piece of paper and you're going to write out all the things that just feel heavy on your heart. There is no like perfect method of this. It's like, what's feeling heavy on your heart right now? Like brainstorm it. It doesn't have to be perfectly written. It's just like, almost like word vomit. If you want to put person's name down and you don't even want to write about why that you don't have to great it's really up to you to let go of whatever you want and then i would um i so i have this like um prayer like this guided prayer that i have so i usually will do like a guided prayer and then i just burn it we'll just like burn this piece i do this in my retreats by the way we do these and it's so powerful to do it with so many women um and we just burn it put it in the fire and like let it go let the earth let nature let the element of fire be your witness for the letting go and releasing so that's a good one too. It feels good to burn it. Talk to me more about the vision board thing. How do you how do you do do vision boards and how do you make them work for you? So the vision boards, I start with like my my core buckets. So what are your core buckets? Your core buckets are the things that matter most to you. I'm gonna give you an example. A bucket could be love, like a love bucket. Okay. Another bucket could be your career bucket. Another bucket is your money bucket. Another bucket is your health bucket. Okay. So I start with my buckets and I think about, okay, what do I want to, and I do this every, for the new year. So like, what are the buckets I want to pour into? What do I want to feel good in and all that? And so for me, my reoccurring theme is love. I love, love. I love my love. I love to enhance my already love that I have. 
Um, um, uh, uh, so anyhow, so I will get, I'm old school. So I do it in person physically. So I take like magazines. I get all these different magazines and I will cut out different things of how I want to feel. For example, let's say someone wants to get married right? Some people may think, well, I'm going to put someone in a wedding dress and a bride and groom. I wouldn't approach it this way. I would approach it in how do you want to feel? So what is the feeling you want for marriage? I want to feel excited. I want to feel inspired. I want to feel sexy. I want to feel loved. I want to feel blah, blah, blah. So now what are images that you can choose that ignite this feeling? Maybe it's a couple running on a beach with their dog. Maybe that's the feeling, right? So maybe some people will think it's the wedding, but really what's the feeling? Because you're not chasing the wedding. That's that's one day. You You desire the feeling of being married with this amazing partner that you have. So I will put things on there. So if let's say somebody wants a house, right? Someone might think, okay, I'm just gonna put a, a regular, a nice house. And no, what like put things, maybe it's the texture of the house, or maybe it's like the colors, or maybe it's the you know, bright light. Maybe it's um the paintings, the art, whatever. What is it that you want to feel? So I go with the feeling of things, even if it's not like the actual place. So my vision board has, so I actually had on my vision board, one of my vision board a couple of years ago, I had like, home, like a home. And it was like in nature. And I, I, I don't even know where this home was. It looked like it was in somewhere in another country. And it was, it was just a lot of greenery. I just like put like a lot of different greenery gardens and green and nature and trees and blah. And I, you know, cause this is what I wanted. And then I had on my vision board, I'm a, sometimes things attract me different numbers. And I had one, I don't know why I put one, two, three on there. And I live in, I have my nature home where I live on land, the preserve land. Uh, and uh, my home, the address is 123, which is very interesting. <laughs> so you just never know why these things happen, but it was attractive to me to see all this greenery. Cause I wanted to be surrounded by greenery. So now in my house, I look out every window, every window, all I see are is greenery, trees. And, and so I go with the feeling of what I want. And that's how, that's what helps me. I don't look at my vision board, say, I need to do this. I need to do this. Nope. I know what I need to do. I do it in my everyday life, right? I take the steps that I need to take. I work on my, on my thoughts and my beliefs and that, you know, and, and my body and all of that. And my vision board just feels good to, to look at. Tell me, did you at any point want to manifest something, it just didn't work for you. And you realize that perhaps this was never meant for me. Did that ever happen? Because I I wonder, you know, manifestation, the process in itself, doing it and like having this thought dominating how you think, how you work, it's addictive because it keeps you in a positive vibration. And that in itself could feel so amazing, regardless of the results. But you're also, you know, living a life making things happen, planning and strategizing and hoping to go from level one to two to three to four. And, you know, so at what point do you, as you're trying to manifest something, it doesn't work out. It's simply, oh, I just got to align my actions and my thoughts. I got to re-strategize versus this is not my path. Do you think there is that ever happens? Yeah. Yeah, So there's a lot of things that have not manifested in my life that I wanted it to manifest. But what I do is this is where it's your job to discern if it's something that you truly want, or is it the thing that you think you need and you should have manifested in your life, whether it's in your career, in your relationship, right? When, when it comes from a place of just genuine inspiration and something you truly want, I can recognize that for myself now because I used to force, try to force certain things. And then I'm like, why is this not working? Right. And I know, and I'm the type of person that I will be, I will just keep going until it happens. And I've had things happen in the past, like manifest eventually that I'm like, oh, that's, it shouldn't have, it wasn't really meant to manifest. I, I see what happened here. I forced it. Right. So I think that really just understanding where it's coming from, this, this desire, is it really truly yours? And do you really want it? And for what reasons, 
right? And when it's, and, and, and I also believe like if you're showing up and you're doing everything you can genuinely and it's not happening, then I also think maybe challenge if you still want it truly, if it's still for you, because who you were when you started it, when you decided that you wanted it, you might not be that same person. Things might have shifted also. And then I also think that the perspective of truth is what is meant for me will not pass me by. If it's meant for me, it will be for me. Um, you know? Yeah, I love that. So if you keep like when, as you double down on that clarity bit, like that has been such a strong theme to our conversation. If you feel like, no, this is, I, I want this. I think this will be good for me then keep at it and keep the belief strong that it will not pass you by, as you said, if it's truly meant for you. At yeah, exactly. What point in this journey does surrender come in? What role does surrender play? Because that always, that is something that gets talked about so often. And yet, you know, very few of us, surrender is so hard for us humans. We we crave control. I think surrender, there's this misconception about surrender that you just kind of like, like, leave it in the hands of faith and the universe. But the truth is you've already d- done your work. If you've done the work and you've done what you you know you need to do, and most of the time like you're not really surrendering because you you may not be doing something with the goal, but in your mind you're still your job is really still to like believe that what is meant for you is going to be for you and you've done enough and just to remind yourself. So I think that surrender uh, in a way where just don't obsess over it. I think people tend to obsess over something over like this and that's not helpful. And the thing is when you start to focus on what's not working, what's not coming into your life, what's not manifesting, you're going to get more of that, of it not coming, not working, not manifesting. So surrender to the belief that it will work. And it will work itself out. And you've done enough. If you truly have showed up, right? And this is where you have to know yourself and trust yourself that you've done enough. Some people, they want to keep doing, 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 doing. And they put their value on doing. And if they're not doing, then that means that like they, they don't even know what to do with themselves. So this is inner work. You have to do the inner work so you can recognize these patterns If you're not able to surrender and you're just trying to do, 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 this is a pattern and that's not going to be helpful for you or the manifestation process. I struggle with that because very often when things don't go in my favor, I would always, my mom would always say, I hate that this didn't work out for you. And I'm like, I didn't do enough. There's something that I didn't do. I have to figure that out and I have to do it and then it will work out. And very often my friends would say to me that it's not supposed to be that hard. Like the thing that I'm trying to do, though, it's not supposed to, it's not supposed to be so much struggle, get some flow to it and see what happens. And what do you know, if I get some flow to it, if it start, the moment it starts to feel natural is when things start to happen. It's hard to get there, especially for people who can crave control. Someone like me, who's, who, you know, really enjoys being productive and planning and strategizing. It is hard to give that control, but I a hundred percent agree with you you got to get to that place. There has to be like some flow uh, because one of my fundamental beliefs is that life is not supposed to be a struggle, you know? But again, yeah, for some people, it, it yeah, really is. I agree. I think it's a control thing. And I think it's something that people, like you have to work on to heal this part of you that feels a need to control. And that part of you that feels a need to control is most likely a younger part of you, part of you that was younger that, perhaps didn't, w- wasn't able to be in control of certain things. And that part of you is making decisions and acting now as an adult in your adult life, which is why it's so important to go back and really heal that part of, talk to that younger part of, like, let her know, like, we're good. Trust me. I got you. I promise. Like we're good today. Right. Doing that inner child work is so important so that she's not calling the shots when you're older. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and that is that would definitely help creating again, it's, you know, it it speaks to that sense of safety you have creating that safe environment within yourself before you demand it of the world. I think I love love what you've recommended here. Okay, now for on to a more fun and a weird question that I have for you. I don't know if you've <laughs> interacted with Joe Dispenza's work. It's controversial work, but it's 
it's also very fascinating, especially when you read the results. And it's something you said, you know, during our conversation, you said that there are people who have, uh, you know, done gone with affirmations like I'm a billionaire and it has worked out for them. We, you know, Jim Carrey's and uh, Oprah's of the world. But that's not an energy that is all that readily accessible for everyone. So tell me about if you've interacted with Joe Dispenza's work, any commentary would, you would like to give on that? Because I think people read a lot of Joe Dispenza. I know I've read it. And it's it's kind of also very scary that this is out there and there are some people who run with it so completely. Like if you have cancer, you just stop treatment and you start believing. Not that Joe Dispenza recommends that at all. He does not recommend that. But what do you believe about this sort of extreme belief so far as your physical body is concerned, so far as very real troubles, especially physical illnesses are concerned? Well, I think that it can't hurt to pour into your self in a caring way. I don't think that that should only be the only thing that you do, but I also think that it's not going to harm you to, again, say certain things that like, will you can buy into. So let's say someone has stage four cancer. I don't necessarily know if saying, I am, I am healed. I am healed, you know, or, or I am healthy. I'm stage free. I don't know. Stage four free cancer. I don't necessarily know if that's the thing that they should be saying if they can't buy into it. But maybe again, it's like just using the words that align with you and feel good. Like it's about like listening to your body. And if you say something that makes your body feel contracted, that's an indication that it's not like one, it's probably not going to work, but two, it doesn't feel good to you. So like, don't feel like you need to continue to harp on it. But if you say certain words that make you feel expansive, this is an indication that yes, you're receptive, you're open, it feels good. Your body is set, like physically, like the cells in your body is allowing you to like receive. And I think that that is, you know, the, your like compass to know like, okay, what should I say or, say or not say? But I certainly think that it won't hurt to say kind things to yourself and to try to believe in hope and, and all of that um, in a way that feels good and true to you, right? I think it is dangerous to, I don't know who's saying this. I don't listen to, to Joe Dispenza. I know of his work and a little bit of it, but not, so I don't really know what people are saying out there, but I think it is dangerous if people are saying, you know, this is the way, this is like the only way to do it. Or, you know, just use affirmations to heal yourself. That's it. It's not, that's it. Everybody is different. That's the reality. And, and I think, you know, what makes me kind of sad is people just really searching outside of themselves for the cure to get healed, like searching outside leaning on doctors, leaning on, you know, mentors and coaches and other types of people for the information. I just really, my desire is for people to go in within and just, just like really take what you, what felt good, create your own, you know, your own way of doing it and, and add your own spin if you can and work with that. There is no one size fits all blueprint. Joe Dispenza's work may work for some people because they were able to grab what worked for them, just like Tony Robbins' work can work for some people, right? But you cannot think that one person, one method, one way is going to be the way. When you lose yourself and your, your ability to have uh, choices and make decisions for yourself and know what is best for you, then you just give up your, you know, your like sense of, I guess, yeah, self and choice. And I think that's very sad. I think that is a problem that people often have with such uh, content because it's like you, at what point do you completely lose sight of what you want, what, your autonomy basically. And you, exactly. yeah, because you lose autonomy. I think yeah. also because, you know, 8 billion people in the world and some people, placebo effect is a real thing. It's a real phenomenon. It happens. Even doctors uh, acknowledge it, but there are people who run with it and who believe in it so completely that they completely forget that <laughs> there are some, like there is science also right there for you to access and for you to take help from. And that is a scary thought that someone might be suffering for real and not doing anything about it. 
you got to help yourself for God and for any other force, whatever it is that you believe in to help you. So I think that's, I think it's doctors usually who would criticize someone like Joe Dispenza because they're scared that, you know, you're not using your own intellect, your own logic and keeping that very much a, much a part of whatever process you adopt. And then there are also people who motivate themselves by calling themselves names and they're also doing incredible things in the world. So <laughs> I would want to talk to you about this as well. Like people who use like call themselves names and are mean to themselves and they're trying to motivate themselves and are achieving good things in life what would you say about that because we've had this conversation on the show before but that was in a very different context yeah i so you know immediately when you said that my body just kind of like and the reason my body did this is because that was the little girl in me and the adult future mom in me that can't imagine saying this to a child, we are all just grown as children, <laughs> right? And I, it doesn't feel good for me. That's why my body kind of contracted. So I think that like, again, if it works for certain people, great. I'm not, if it's working for them, I'm not knocking it. I'm not the type of person that wants to be called names. I like positive reinforcement. I like positive affirmations. Please tell me how amazing I am all day long. Cause that's just what I, that's the child in me wants to be seen and heard. And that's the love language that I respond to. So I think understanding like what works for you. So that might work for certain people that doesn't work for me. That makes me feel sad. And, 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 and I, I kind of see it like this. Imagine telling a child, you know, at five, six, seven years old, like, you know, you're so lazy or you're so this or get the hell up. It's like, why are you, you know, talking to them like that? I don't think that that's conducive for a healthy human, you know, I think that's, that's, I mean, at least that's my opinion, but again, everybody has their own way and what works for them. And I also want to say that if that works for you, like everyone is, is responding to things that work for them based off of their history and their psychology. So that, so, so if you are, let's just say, if you come from a, a, a history where, you know, that is the way that people were spoken to, that's what you saw growing up. And maybe that's comforting to you. Right. And, and so that might work for someone with that history. I'm not, it's not to say that I know that for a fact, I'm just giving an example. Right. But so now someone that doesn't come from that, that maybe, or maybe comes from that, but their reaction to that was like, I don't want any part of that. Right. They react differently to that. They might see that and, and, and think like, you know, that's horrible that, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe that's how I have to talk to myself. But I guess like, this is for you to discern what works for you, which is why I think it's the most important, the ability to discern what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. And it's also like you, you've said many times during our conversation, it's also a lot about the energy. Like there are people who especially are in those groups where they're working on losing weight and they especially like they go out, particularly choose a trainer who is going to call them names and insult them to keep them going. And it works for them. But at the same time, I wonder what kind of energy you take home, because when that person calls you fat, you believe him because uh, the fact that you were there speaks to that, that you believe that you're fat. So even if you've lost 10 kgs now, somewhere in your head, you're still carrying that energy believing and continuing to believe regardless of what you see in the mirror that you're fat so i wonder like and if you're counting votes so far everyone that i've spoken to on the show has said don't do this there's a better way <laughs> to motivate yourself let's go with that let's not adopt this method and i think you're very right you've put it beautifully for my last question i want to ask you something that very often uh, people have asked in some of our discussions we are around people who are struggling themselves and are perhaps because of their struggles become very negative, very toxic, and lost their own sense of power. And so, you know, often we lash out and we try to rob other people's sense of power as well. If you're around people like that, can we manifest? How do we protect our energy? Because, you know, again, in manifestation, these groups, a lot of the time we are talking about keep your vibe up, keep your vibe up. How do we do that? I, the first thing that comes to mind is boundaries. And I believe that if you have a choice to either limit your interaction with people like that, 
or just don't subject yourself to that, then make that choice for your own well being. Now, on the same token, I'm going to also acknowledge that a lot of the time, the people that are like this are the people closest to us. So the question is, well, what am I not going to speak to my mom? What am I not going to speak to my brother or my sister or my dad or grandma or whoever? Right. And so this is, it is ultimately up to you. It is your responsibility to protect your energy, to protect your mental health, your well being. You do not, your job is not to change, try to change someone else. You don't need to make anyone see anything. You just need to take care of you, clean your side of the street up. Stay on your side. They're in their lane. You're in your lane. And so I would say, um, do not bring up topics if you have to be around them because you live with them or whatever the case may be. Don't bring up topics that you know are going to be triggering, that you know are going, you know, going to uh, make them go down a negative spiral, right? Don't share things with them that you know is not going to be well received. Guess what? I, you know, it's going to stink. I know you probably want to share your, you know, your new ventures or your wins or all the things with people closest to you, but some of them are not going to be able to hold the joy because they themselves don't even know how to do that for themselves. So they can't celebrate with you and it's not personal. So the first thing is like, just don't take it personal because it's not personal. They are on their own journey and they can only meet you through the lens in which they see the world. And if they see the world with the dark lens because of their history, that has nothing to do with you. So I meet people with compassion, with kindness, but most importantly, I protect my energy and myself by creating very healthy boundaries. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful message. Before we sign off, anything you want to share with our audience, let them know how they can work with you. Yeah, so I do. So I have my um my one-on-one coaching where I work with people one-on-one. And then I have my signature program, which is the Manifesting Ninja Academy. And it's the entire foundation of what got me here. It's an online program. And it's just videos and training videos and workbooks on literally what got me here, the mindset foundation that got me to where I am today. And then of course, I do my women's retreats all over the world. So and I am on Instagram where I put out all the content, which is manifesting ninja. And my website is just manifesting ninja.com. As always, the links are going to be in the episode description. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and for sharing your time with me. The video description will have the link to all the resources mentioned during the conversation. And if you would rather listen to these episodes, then you can find Experimental Podcast on most podcast platforms. If you enjoyed the video, please do share your thoughts in the comment section. And if you want to watch more, subscribe to the channel, please, and do hit the notification bell. I will see you again in the next video. Till then, please do take care of yourself. Bye.